In today's video, we will be taking an unboxing and a board overview of the Gigabyte A520M K V2 motherboard. Now this motherboard is a micro ATX motherboard and it will actually fit in the case that we did from last week, if you remember. So that might be a potential build we might be thinking about, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. This is AM4 obviously, um, and there is out of the box support for the Ryzen 5000 series here. Um, so the big plus with this model, model board is A, it only costs me £45, which is a plus obviously, because it's cheap and we like that here. And obviously it does support any Ryzen 5000 series processor or the 4000 or even the 3000 series processor out of the box and there's no BIOS updates needed so that's the big plus with this model board no BIOS update needed on any CPU that you use now obviously Ryzen 1000 and the 2000 CPUs won't work with this model board because this is A520 so it has to be at least Ryzen 3000 series or above basically up to the 5000 series the Ryzen 3200G and the 30 400G also aren't included in that either. So that those aren't com well they aren't officially compatible although potentially could work but they aren't officially compatible. But the 3100, the 3600 and then anything above is all good. But anyway, let's crack on with the unboxing now. I didn't want to show you the front because it is kind of covered with all the uh, postage uh, labels and what have you which Amazon seem to like to do nowadays where they stick things on the on, on the front rather than using a separate box but it is what it is and people's laziness is what it is so you just have to put up with that so opening the box as you can see pretty plain isn't it at least it was sealed this time we had a mobile board which is a <laughs> gigabyte mobile board before and people were like why wasn't it sealed and, and that was a bit of an odd, odd thing especially for new mobile board but anyway, this one is a sealed one. Uh, what do we have? We have two, no, I think, no, sorry, that's just one. Is it? I think it's just one actual SATA cable, which is very stingy, actually. I mean, usually there's two, but it's budget, so you can kind of forgive it. And our IO shield, which looking at the IO already, it is very sparse from the IO shield, as you can see. It, you're not going to get luxuries here guys and that's the big thing but it is a cheap AM4 mobile board to get you on the platform if that's what you're looking for now probably I would say as we get the small board out I'd probably say this is for, for budget flippers really for people looking to flip PCs that's probably more where it's uh, aimed at but you can obviously use this as your own personal mobile board as well for your own personal PC there we go, just had to uh, open the package in there, it's a little bit awkward, what have we got there? And here is said motherboard. Right off the bat you'll see that this really is budget guys. Um, there's some very obvious giveaways, the two RAM sticks only, or RAM modules only, um, RAM slots sorry, uh, only, rather than your four RAM slots on most motherboards, so a bit of a cut back there obviously straight away and obviously the VRMs is obviously quite uh, quite sparse there but yes um, as we do our motherboard unboxings and our overviews when we talk about the board we'll just go through from the top sort of left hand side all the way to this side to down that side and then down there and then we'll talk about the PCI uh, PCI slots, PCIe slots, and then we'll finally look at the rear I/O there, which probably won't take us long because there's not much. <laughs> but anyway, let, let's carry on. It, it is a budget motherboard, and it is what it is. So overall, I do think, you know, it looks okay and it's fine. But we have our eight pin here at the very top here for our CPU supplementary power, which is, you know, perfectly fine. Um, we have a very sparse. 4x2 VRM setup which I really wouldn't recommend using a very high-end CPU with this yes technically you could go up to the Ryzen 9 5950X if you really wanted to with this model board it's compatible but I would highly recommend that you don't because you're basically going to have your CPU just basically bottlenecked by the actual model board itself so 
your VRM just is not going to keep up with a processor that powerful. So um, I would say if you're buying this budget motherboard, you're probably looking at Ryzen 5 5600X as the processor that you want to get to actually pair with this motherboard. The Ryzen 5 4500 is also a great choice as well. Or the Ryzen 5 3600 could be a great choice. I'd say anything up to probably the Ryzen 7 5800X is probably fine. Anything going up to maybe the 5800X 3D and then you're going above that, I probably would stay clear. I'd say probably the 5700X or the 5700X 3D is probably where the absolute sort of cutoff point is with this mobile board, but you could maybe just about get to 5800X if you really wanted to push it. But I would then recommend that you do get heat sinks for your VRMs as well if you are going to do that. But anyway, so here is our AM4 socket, obviously. Um, you know, you, if you haven't seen an AM4 socket by now, you must be living under a rock because they've been out for freaking ages now. I think 2016 AM4 came out in eight years ago. So yeah, it's kind of a, almost a legacy. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, it's almost legacy now. It's a, well, not legacy, but certainly classic by now. Um, then we have our just our four pin um, CPU fan connector here. This is very budget mobile board, very basic, very, very basic. So you're not gonna get any fancy stuff here. So just be aware of that guys. Um, our two RAM slots, which will take up to 64 gigabytes of uh, memory. Um, I believe that it's clocked up to 3200 megahertz, but it could go higher with like overclocks and what have you, but I'll put it all the details below just to confirm that but again most people are probably only going to put a 16 gigabyte kit in here maybe up to a 32 gigabyte kit if you really want to kind of push the system a bit so that should still be fine with even even just the two ram slots again there's absolutely nothing here in terms of like debugging or anything like that so you're not going to get any help there you're probably going to have to use a speaker the old-fashioned way as a, a beep speaker and just to to do your debugging if you're a uh, mobile board isn't booting uh, we do have our 24 pin here which is obviously standard for our uh, main ATX uh, power supply we then do have a, a CMOS reset uh, here for our um, you know to reset your CMOS to reset things back to factory settings basically for your mobile board uh, underneath that is a speaker connector so that's where you can put your beep speaker and then weirdly we have our front panel connectors here which is kind of really weird because usually at the bottom of the mobile board they usually are um, and I don't know why they've kind of placed them here but they are there so it's just where that uh, sort of white connector is there if you can see that hopefully guys and below that we do have four um, SATA free connectors here so that will obviously um, I think that's six gigabytes a second or something transfer read or you know it's, it's the modern SATA port so that's good they're not right angled or anything which is a little bit you know you, I'd like to see it right angled but again it's budget mobile board so you can't complain and then weirdly right at the very bottom here we have our USB free connector for your USB front panel USB free front, front panel it's a bit weird placing but it is what it is we then have two USB 2 headers here, which again, it's a budget mobile board, so it's kind of playing towards that budget sort of USB 2 now, obviously, so that's why there's two of them. We do have like a TPM module sort of header thing, but again, I don't think anyone's gonna use that, so that's fine. And then we just have our standard front audio um, jacks, you know, front audio header, basically, for our front audio jacks at the front of our case. So, pretty much as bog standard as you're going to get for a motherboard now be aware that there's no ARGB header support here no 5 volt 3 pin support and there's no 4 pin 12 volt RGB support here either so if you are going down the RGB route uh, this probably isn't your probably isn't the motherboard that you want and also be aware that this motherboard is a very shortened motherboard as well so it only takes the six standoff screws as you can see here on the board it really it, you know really it should be coming out to here really if it's like full micro ATX standard size but it doesn't so maybe you might like that if you've got a very compact case I mean this is pretty much an ITX mobile board almost but it's just a little bit bigger than, than uh, ITX so maybe if you've got like um maybe a more generous ITX case, you might be able to sort of squeeze the motherboard in possibly. 
Uh, there, I think there is some. I think the Cooler Master NR two hundred might actually fit this in, but I can't guarantee this. There are some ITX cases which are a little bit more generous with the motherboard size that might be able to fit a micro ATX, a very small micro ATX motherboard like this in. Before we get onto the PCI slots, we do have one additional fan connector. Again, is this is a very budget board and it's very limited, and with only one additional fan connector, you're going to struggle to connect up all your fans especially if you're doing a more advanced system but again most people are probably going to use the back fan as just one fan uh, for their system so that placement there is fine and then obviously the cpu will get its own cpu fan uh, connector there as well so for most people i think that's going to be fine but again just be aware if you are going to use plenty of fans in your system you are going to need a fan splitter to actually split to the sp split four or five fans or three fans into the one header there because you only have the one header on this motherboard apart from your cpu fan connector he header now for a budget motherboard that only costs 45 pounds the big plus here is it does have the m.2 support for mvme drives only gen 3 obviously the a520 chipset only supports gen 3 drives here um so be aware also with your pcie time 16 slot that you only get gen 3 speeds rather than gen 4 speeds even if you use a Gen 4 compatible CPU. So that's a unfortunate limitation of the A520 chipset. Now we do have enough support for the 2280 standard here for M.2 drives, so that should be fine. If you do have M.2 drives longer than that, which I don't think many people are gonna have, or it's very unlikely that you will have, you won't be able to fit them in because um, the PCIe times one slot is just behind that drive, uh, just behind that, um, 2280 uh, millimeter point so just be aware of that so we do get our pcie times one slot as well which is just over that mvme drive slot as well if you can see that there guys on the camera well um so just be aware if you are using m.2 drives and you are using the first pcie times one slot for maybe like a wi-fi card because there is no onboard wi-fi here just to be clear there's no no onboard Wi-Fi, so you will have to sort that out yourself if you want to either get a USB adapter or a um, PCIe card for a Wi-Fi card. So yeah, just be aware that it will go over, if you use that first slot, it will go over the NVMe drive. And then we go on to our main 16 times um, PCIe Gen 3 lane, uh, which is just b below that met that that first slot so this is where you'll put your graphics card obviously if you are going to go with a graphics card you can you can with this system do an apu maybe something like the 5600g i think um, there's other ones as well um 5700g and there's some newer ones as well which have been released recently which i've forgotten off the top of my head but um there are multiple apus now that you can use so you might not even have to use this um graphics card slot at all and then below that we just do just have a bias battery here and we do have the Northbridge heat sink here which has no fan on it so that's kind of nice for uh I think it's my uh, sorry it's the south bridge I think it is but yeah so no no cooling needed no additional cooling needed just the heat sink itself so that's kind of nice so yeah I think we've uh covered the motherboard quite well here um we'll move on to the rear IO and that'll be that so um the rear IO, as I said, is absolutely basic, but it is enough to get you up and running and get you what you need, obviously, guys. So going from left to right, we have two USB 2 ports here and then a PS2 port, which is a bit odd, but maybe OK for like legacy um, keyboards and what have you, and mousters and what have you. We then have a very old VGA legacy port, which again, I don't think many people are going to use, but it's there. And then we do have an HDMI port, which is probably more convenient for most people, as if you are using an APU build, you do have the HDMI port there for your um, output, your display output. Just be aware if you are doing an APU build, if you do want a dual monitor, you are going to have to use the VGA as your second uh, monitor. So really, really, if you are looking for an APU build, this probably isn't it. I would probably go with a dedicated graphics card, especially if you're going for a, a dual monitor setup. But the HDMI port for most people is probably gonna be enough just for the one display that they need. 
We then have four USB 3 ports, which I think might be USB 3.1 Gen 2, but I'm not sure. I'll put it below to confirm. And then we just have a one gigabyte standard LAN port or Ethernet port, which again is standard and is fine, but you probably would nowadays, you probably would want to see a 2.5 gigabyte one, but again, this is a very budget model board, you're not going to get that sort of feature here. And then again, extremely basic audio, just free, free audio outputs here. So just for very basic headphones and stuff. Obviously, if you want anything more, you are going to have to use an expansion card to to use that or additional um, additional audio separately. So yeah, overall, yes, this is a good budget mobile board. Uh, there's not much to it. It, 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 it is very, very basic. I, I did forget to mention just before I close the video, that the M.2 slot does have one of those um, sort of push pin type connectors so you can you can kind of push it in uh, and reconnect your um, M.2 slot so you don't have to use the M.2 screw and you don't have to lose your screw basically your M.2 screw so that's that's kind of handy as well yeah so very basic mobile board very small mobile board it's very very tiny actually you know but it will do your job if you are a PC flipper I think this is a good option because you can really get onto the AM4 platform for extremely cheap as I said, I only paid £45 for this from new, so I mean, you really can't beat that nowadays, guys, um, especially for a new mobile board out of the box. I think that's a really good price. Gigabyte really do do the budget end very, very well, and generally, I would say I haven't really had many problems with, with Gigabyte mobile boards. I've had a few problems with other things from Gigabyte, but we won't go there. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, their mobile boards generally are quite good, and you know the BIOS and what have you is maybe not the best but again you don't need to mess around with the BIOS with this mobile board it's literally plug and play like I said because any Ryzen 5000 series CPU is compatible out of the box with this mobile board so that's great and I think that's the real strong point with this mobile board an out of the box set up and go and you, you don't have to think about it perfect for the PC builder who wants to build their first AM4 Ryzen PC and just doesn't want to faff around and mess around with uh, BIOS settings and all that rubbish. They just want to install it, get up and running and get their games being played. So yeah, I think overall, if you are in the market for an a, a cheap AM4 build, this is a very good option and I would certainly highly look at it, at it personally. So again, Please like the video guys for the algorithm, please comment what you think of this build or think of this board or you know other AM4 builds, other, other AM4 boards that you recommend or what have you and any other sort of components and parts you want me to look at as long as they're on the cheap side, on the budget side and uh, please subscribe to see my future videos and as always guys I will see you in the next one, bye guys.